Welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So on this video, we're going to be sharing the process of how we made over this half price. Yes, on half price day, we picked this up at a local business that was downsizing. So we got it for $7.50. Just a nice solid pine piece that used to be an entertainment center but we have a little bit different of a vision for it. So now let's see what problems we have to deal with with this entertainment center. And right off the bat, you can tell that that is not a very, nope, that's not a solid piece of wood behind there. That's just some press board. So we're going to deal with that. And then one of the shelves is missing. So there's only one shelf for this whole cabinet. So at one point of this cabinet's life, it did actually have doors on it, even though these are not the original doors. These are something that we had taken off another piece of furniture that we had laying around the shop. And as you see, nope, they don't fit either, but we'll see what we can create out of them. So replacing the shelf isn't too bad. We just went to the local hardware store, bought a piece of pine that was almost the same thickness, and then just cut it down to size. And why not? If we're going to replace the backing, why don't we do it with something fun? So this is just a piece of paneling, yet again, just cut down to size that we picked up at our local hardware store. Okay, so that was the easy cut parts just measuring off, cutting to fit the space, but now he's going to have to cut down these doors. So just using the table saw, doing some dry fits to see if you need to take a little bit more off here and there. So, so far, so good. But the plot twist is, of course, I envision there to be a hole in the door so that you can see into what is in the cabinet. So, yep, now Chris is just sitting at the top of the table saw and cutting the inside of this cabinet out. The nice thing about doing that on a table saw is you can have that nice, consistent, straight cut. But, of course, you can't make a 90-degree angle <laughs> cut. So now he's just using the jigsaw to cut the rest of it apart. Give it that round over edge, just like the body and the drawers are. He's just taking a router bit over the outside and the inside just to give it that little bit of a round over. We well, always think that if something is loose, it's going to come off easily. So I hope I made that look easier than it actually was. Oh, did I mention that we got this cabinet from a sewing store that had lots of sewing glasses? So I'm just taking one of those Swifter rags, trying to get all those little pieces of fabric that was probably stored, that were probably stored in these drawers. There are a lot of them in the crevices. And then I luckily, you know, when you're really inspecting, I noticed that it, that bottom is not completely attached anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and get that glued back together. Yes, I ended up having to cut the bottom apart because it went all the way down. And then you're not going to see that under behind the drawers anyway. But now I need to go ahead and scuff sand the whole piece. So years of furniture polish, cleaning, dirt and debris, whatever you want to definitely, even though it's real wood, it's unfinished wood, it definitely has some type of a film on it over the years. So I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper and scuff sanding the entire piece. <music> So 
So the router is a cutting tool, so just because it gave it that round over does not mean that it sanded it. So not only am I going to sand that nice and smooth, I'm also going to go ahead and take that really shiny off of what's left behind. So now that I have everything prepped by sanding and making everything nice and smooth, now my next step of prep is getting the pieces cleaned up. And now I'm just using some crud cutter, some warm water, and getting these all nice and clean. Getting any residues that are left behind that would prevent my paint from sticking off. Now the one thing about pine furniture <laughs> is the knots. Do you see all those dark spots? Yep, they are knots. And plus this is raw, unfinished wood, especially <laughs> since I sanded it down. I mean, I was just, it was already raw to begin with. I was just taking the years of debris that had stained it off. So I'm going in with a couple coats of shellac in the hopes of sealing the raw wood in, along with sealing those knots in so they do not bleed through my finished paint and I'm just going to be painting the outside of the drawer faces so I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on wrap this drawer itself in plastic to pretend it, prevent it from getting any of overspray when I'm spraying this piece so I could tell that the knots were just absorbing the shellac in. I just wasn't going to be able to get enough of that shellac to make sure that those knots weren't going to bleed through my white paint. So I switched over to my Rust-Oleum Red Primer. Yep, red, but this stuff works wonderful to stop bleed through. Maybe I should have done that at first, but I kind of thought that the shellac would have been enough. But nope, with it being raw, it was just soaking it right in. The one thing you'll notice when you're painting with a light color, especially white, is that any little crevices, any cracks from those knots, even though they're not bleeding through, you can see the crevices of them. So I had to go back in with some wood filler and fill those holes all in. So now that I schlacked over where I had wood filled along with painting, white and now everything is dry i'm going in and sanding the piece so a little bit of distressing on the front of these drawers along with sanding the rest of the piece so that it is nice and smooth and the thing about that true coat sprayer by gray coat is it just says such a fine mist there's really no texture at all After removing all the sanding dust, <laughs> using the air compressor along with a towel, making sure that it is nice and dust free, I'm going in and spraying everything with a coat of polycrylic to seal this all in. I always feel like I should give a high five to Chris during this moment when all of a sudden, yep, now it's Chris that you see. <laughs> yep, we're always tag teaming our pieces of furniture. And if you guessed it, yep, it is a type of chicken wire, but not the same as that other chicken wire. So this is the wire that we chose to use. It's a little bit closer weave. So all he's doing is measuring off. And the hard thing about this type of wire is not necessarily the cutting of it, which is not completely easy, but is when it's been round, wound on that round roll, getting it to lay flat. So, yep, it's just one of those you got to take your time or process, processes it to get it all cut. It's fairly simple to cut. So now all he's going to do is just use the staple gun to staple it on the back of this door.
So now to cover up the raw edge of that wire, he just cut some strips of a piece of wood that we had on hand that was already white. So it's just going to give it that nice finished look. So when Chris originally cut that piece of backing, he originally thought that the bottom part was going to come off. So he has a little bit more to cut down on this piece of paneling. But sometimes it was easier just to leave that bottom piece on than trying to destroy the wood and then make it a very weak body of a cabinet. So yep, I'm just gonna cut it down and then attach it to that back. Now, not only only because there's only three knobs, but because they are wooden, we are going to change them out anyway. And then we need to find two extra ones now for the drawer. So yeah, no, I don't have a problem when I'm thrifting. I can't help but pick up hardware. So we have quite a stash, which is a good thing along with hinges. So we didn't have to run to the hardware store to buy hinges either. These are hinges that we had thrifted and there's many different styles of hinges. So luckily we had four that would work. Now that he has all the hardware on, he's going to add some glides to the bottom. That way that the wood is not just sitting onto somebody's floor. So these are just a simple little hammer in type of item that we just buy a multi-pack off of Amazon. If you notice, Chris is using a metal ruler just to give the door a little bit of lift so it's not rubbing wood on wood when he's screwing in the hinges. Okay, so what did you think? Oh my goodness. So what were the chances of us having two doors? And that must have been off a coffee bar that we had had um, totally forgot about. And then all of a sudden, like, Chris is like, hey. So yeah, then he really was, yeah, I really did talk. I'm just like, oh, that just needs to be closed in. So I love that it had extra storage. I love that you can put displays and putting that wire just gives it that farmhouse cottage core without using the chicken wire yeah there's other wires out there but um yeah I just absolutely love the wire the white of it all sometimes those pine pieces you think oh they'll just paint up easy but those knots sometimes those knots can be oh they can be pesky but yeah good primer some patience some spackle because white shows every flaw that there is black hides them white shows them so I absolutely love how this turned out and I hope when it takes its turn in our booth that it doesn't last long. <laughs> you just never know right now. So thanks again for watching today's video guys and as always if I have inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way, give me a quick comment down below. 
And thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.